Let's get started on today's notes over scatter plots and trend lines. Today, we're just going to be introducing you to scatter plots. It's just a way to display data. So displaying data visually can help you see relationships between variables. A scatter plot is a special type of graph that has points plotted to show the relationship between two sets of data. So given this table right here, this is an example of data collected from a local snow cone shop. It's just made up numbers and temperatures, but the owner kept track of the total sales right here and the temperature at 4 p.m. for 11 consecutive days. So when we look at this table, it's just kind of a bunch of numbers, right? We've kind of got different temperatures. We've got different sales here. We might be able to stare at it for a little bit and maybe make some conclusions. But what I'm going to do is take all of that data and I'm going to graph it on a coordinate plane. The temperature at 4 p.m., I'm going to call my x value and I'm going to plot it on my x axis. My snow cone sales will be all of my y values and I'll plot those points on my y axis. So when I take these points and I graph them on a coordinate plane, it looks like this. And now we can visually see the relationship between the temperature at 4 p.m. and the total sales. So go ahead and take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can make some observations about this data. You might have observed that as the temperature increases, what happens to the total sales? They also increase. So as the temperature goes up, total sales, snow cone sales, also increases. Now, this just means that there is a correlation. There's a relationship between this data. There's a relationship between temperature and total sales. It might be why you see more snow cone shops open up in the summer than you would in the winter. So in the graph, it is apparent that as the temperature increases, the sales increase as well. However, this does not show a perfect linear relationship, we only see a correlation. So let's move on. Trend lines, lines of best fit. So a correlation describes the relationship between two sets of data. Once points are plotted in the scatter plot, a graph may show this correlation. We use these correlations to examine trends and make predictions. It's why we do all of this in the first place. So when we talk about correlations, I can label data to have a positive correlation, which is what we just saw in the snow cone sales. Both sets of data increase. We see this as what's on our x-axis increases, what's on our y-axis also increase. So you can kind of see this like positive slope. You also may see a negative correlation, and it's the same type of thing. You might see a as one set of data, so as maybe my x values increase, my y values don't increase, they decrease. So I have this negative correlation. And then if I plot my points on the coordinate plane and they're just scattered about everywhere, whatever I have, have graphed on my x axis, and whatever I've graphed on my y-axis, there's no relationship between the two. One does not affect the other. So let's move on. Let's look at the snow cone sales again. Let's go back to that. The trend shows a positive correlation, which we talked about. Because of this, we can draw a line of best fit or a trend line. They mean the same thing, a line of best fit or a trend line through the data points. This line of best fit typically has as many points above it as below it and goes through the center of the data. So today, we're just gonna be drawing a line of best fit. You'll see in later lessons how to compute an exact line of best fit or calculate an exact line of best fit. But today, we're just gonna be drawing a line of best fit. So I have one here and it's in green. Here's the data. And my line of best fit goes through the center of the data and it has about as many points above it as it does below it. When you're drawing your trend line, 
it's okay if you're a little bit off of my line of best fit. So that's what this is. This green is the line of best fit. So let's move on. So using trend lines to make predictions, it's why we do all of this in the first place. We use data, we graph it, we see if there's any correlation between whatever we're looking at. We come up with some line of best fit, which when you get into algebra two and perhaps pre-calculus, you might be looking at curves of best fit and different, um, different equations that match your data. But today in algebra one, we'll just focus on linear um, equations. So we can use this line of best fit to make predictions. For example, tomorrow the temperature around 4 p.m. should be 103 degrees. How much can the snow cone shop expect to make? So if I look at my graph and I wanna know what they can expect to make, I'm gonna use my trend line. So 103 degrees is about right here. I go up, it's at this point on my line, which is about $693. So what can the snow cone shop expect to make tomorrow? $693. Does that mean the snow cone shop is definitely going to make $693? No, we're just making a prediction. When we make a prediction that's inside of our data points, it's called interpolation. We use interpolation, and I'm gonna highlight this because this is a really good vocabulary word. We use interpolation when we make predictions based on values inside our data points. So recall that our data points go from 85 degrees to 105 degrees. That was our range in temperature. So we, when we interpolate, we're looking at temperatures that are between 85 and 105 degrees. So our temperatures range from 85 degrees to 105 degrees. We are interpolating if we make predictions based on any temperature between these two temperatures. Moving on. What if we want to make a prediction based on values that are outside the data we collected? For example, the day after tomorrow, the temperature around 4 p.m. should be 110 degrees. How much can the snow cone shop expect to make? Well, when I look at 110 degrees, that's right here. I go up right here on my trend line and I go over, that's $756. So tomorrow, I can predict that if it's 110 degrees at 4 p.m., based on the data I've collected and the trend line that I have drawn, I can expect to make $756. Again, this is just a prediction. Does that mean that I will absolutely make $756? No. But here's our next vocabulary word, extrapolation. We use extrapolation when we make predictions based on values outside our data points. Our temperatures range from 85 degrees to 105 degrees like we just talked about, but we're making a prediction that's outside of that range. It's 110 degrees. So we're extrapolating if we make predictions based on any temperature higher than 105 degrees or lower than 85 degrees. But you have to be really careful when you extrapolate because when you make predictions that are outside of the data that you've collected, they can often be misleading. For example, if it's going to be randomly 120 degrees, how much can you expect to make? You know, you're just, you're outside of your data. So it can be very misleading when you do stuff like that. So this is just day one of scatter plots and trend lines. It's just an introduction to scatter plots. So can you Tell me whether the relationship or the type of correlation between data, can you tell me if there is a negative correlation? And let's go back to this. Can you tell me if there is a negative correlation, a positive correlation, or no correlation? And then when you're given a set of data, can you graph it, draw a trend line, and make some predictions based on that data or based on your trend line? And this concludes your lesson for day one over scatter plots and trend lines. I hope it was helpful.